Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I have been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we are speaking with Taryn Brewer. Taryn is a retired educator having taught preschool during the last 12 years of her career. She has always loved kids and all animals, and her family has had a wide variety of pets and livestock. She loves the outdoors and reading in her spare time. In addition to being the TRN chairman of the Friends of the Jeanette Hunt Animal Shelter, she is also the president. Since the organization began managing the local shelter just over a year ago, she volunteers there three days a week. Life is busy and full. It's rewarding to be retired and have the time to give back to the community. Karen, thank you, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Stacey. It's so nice to be with you. So, Karen, you know, we've known each other for a few years at this point in time. But if you can let listeners know, how did you get started in helping community cats? Well, honestly, until about four years ago, I didn't know what a community cat was. But one evening, a friend of mine was eating at a local food establishment, and she noticed a hungry kitten crying outside the door. She fed it, and that began the thought process that maybe there were more cats out there who needed help. And she came over and approached me and said she would certainly like a co-chair to begin a TNR program in our community. And did I know an organization that could help us? As it happened, I was already involved with an organization who had been hoping for many years to get a program going. So we met each other and our program began. A older lady from a community not too far from us was already trapping and getting community cats spayed and neutered. And she was kind enough to begin the first steps of mentoring us and loaning us her traps until we could purchase some of our own equipment. And that was back in February of 2012. And where are you located, Karen? We are located in Blair, Nebraska. So it's a very rural community where you are? It is a very rural, very farm-based community. Our county that we serve covers about 400 square miles, and there is just a lot of need for cats for rodent control, as many of our farmers raise grain or livestock, which they feed grain, and you know what that brings, mice and rats, and those rats and mice have to be controlled by the lovely cats. Then when you first started, you partnered with an organization, or who did you work with to help actually start with your first Trap New to Return program? Actually, we just kind of borrowed equipment, and honestly, I was already hooked into an organization that could begin the funding of it. So we went out and kind of learned by trial and error. And ironically, some of the equipment that we were lent wasn't really well taken care of. And so we not only learned some basics of trapping, but we learned how important the care of your equipment is. And we met through the MRFRS mentoring program. So I assume that that was after that initial startup time. How long had you been doing Feral Cat, Trap Neuter Return before you entered into the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society's mentoring program? We were actually mentored in 2014, but we did not have that many cats under our belt, so to speak, uh, because as you know, this has a learning curve to it. <laughs> and our first year, we thought we were doing a fantastic job when we managed to nab 141 cats to get them altered. The second year, we did about 173, and we were giving ourselves a pat on the back. And now 
we kind of grin and look back on those days and wonder where those slow days went because now we are working nearly daily <laughs> on this cat <laughs> population issue. <laughs> so it was in 2014 that we were blessed to get a grant through you guys. And um, we, on this show, we haven't talked much about the mentoring experience. Would you be willing to share with us what that was like? Absolutely. The really neat component of that mentoring grant experience was realizing that there was a whole network, really basically nationwide, working on the same issues and facing the same challenges as you were. It really made you feel like, gosh, we're not alone out here. There's other people helping as well. Maybe we really can get this population under control. It was also really interesting to note how the processes that each group followed were just a little bit different, but the overall goals were the same. We would have these group conference calls once a month or two times a month if needed, where five or six or seven groups would be on the same call together so that everybody would be able to share their experiences and be able to see how things were working for them in their mentoring process. Um, and the group effort, I think, was very beneficial. And it sounds like it was for you as a group out in Nebraska that really didn't have a group next door that you could work with or, or partner with. Yes. Um, unfortunately, the Midwest has been a little bit slower to embrace TNR and the cat population control measures necessary, but we're working on it. <laughs> One thing I remember distinctly from that project, and I tend to use, uh, refer that mentoring project as sort of the advanced placement class for trap neuter and return, <laughs> because I would ask groups to do so much intense trapping over a pretty short period of time in there, what we would call a target area. But being in Nebraska, you had quite a bit of challenges because it was a pretty cold and snowy winter and you were trapping in the winter time. Do you have any tips for success for keeping your trapping going through the winter months? Actually, the weather is pretty challenging in the winter in Nebraska. But one thing that we have learned is if we can microwave our bait until it is really hot, and then wrap it up in a towel to keep it warm while we quickly get to our trapping site. That helps a lot because frozen bait does not attract cats. The other thing is to make sure that you have proper attire for yourself so that you are warm enough because sometimes you're standing right out in the elements and it can be brutal. I will be honest and say that the trapping does slow down a bit in the winter just because of the weather. If it is too cold, either on the day that we're supposed to trap or the day that we're supposed to release, then we need to back off and not trap that week. We don't want to release cats when it is too bitterly cold for them. And I also think that there were a couple of instances where you were just going through barn cats and you were trapping those cats in the wintertime from within the barn. Yes, that is true. And that is one aspect that we do keep going. Some of our farmers are really good and caring about their cats and actually provide either hay or straw or some even provide heated houses for their cats to snuggle down with in the winter. And those cats, we feel comfortable getting altered in the cold weather. Another one of your challenges was um, accessibility for um, a spay neuter. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong on my memory here, but I believe you used to have to drive your cats quite a ways to get to a spay neuter clinic. Is that still the case? Actually, no, we are truly blessed. We actually have a spay-neuter clinic about 20 miles from Blair. And so our trip is pretty easy compared to some of the other groups that I knew traveled over an hour one way to get their cats brought in. So we feel really blessed. And we also have our local vets who are very supportive of our program. 
So I think we're sitting pretty good. <laughs> well, that's great. It's, I know that can be a stumbling block for many organizations, just not being able to have access to affordable spay neuter um, at a at a local level. And um, the other thing, my I'm going back through my my memory of 2014, which I can't believe is a couple of years ago. Was I believe we introduced you to using transfer cages? Is that correct? You did, and they have become such a valued piece of equipment that I really don't know how we went for the first two years without them. We transfer nearly everyone to transfer cages. In fact, even when we bring our shelter kittens to one of our local vets, they ask that those cats be placed in transfer cages because she said that the cats can suffocate themselves in a pet taxi in the corner, where in our transfer cages, it's not possible. So she feels much more secure about putting a sleeping cat in a transfer cage. That allowed you to be able to transfer more cats to the clinic in a smaller vehicle. That is correct. So for those that don't know what a transfer cage is, it is about, would you say about half the size of a trap or two-thirds of the size of a trap? Probably two-thirds. Yeah, and then once you trap the cat, how do you get the cat from the trap into the transfer cage? Well, the nice thing is the doors match up perfectly. So then if you just open the two sliding door mechanisms and place a towel over the transfer cage so it looks dark. The cat that's then in the trap thinks it's going to escape and goes into your transfer cage. Now, I will say if they're a little bit stubborn or hesitant, we do have a pair of, um, I'm not sure what you even call them, but we call it a big fork Mm -hmm. that we can put behind the cat and just kind of nudge it forward. And once you get them started, they, they transfer right in. It's fabulous. And now let's take a moment to listen to a few words from our sponsors. Ready to make a big difference for cats in your community? We've got an exciting opportunity that can jumpstart your efforts. The Community Cats Podcast has launched Community Cats Grants. When you qualify for this innovative program, you'll gain valuable knowledge about how to raise funds for your spay-neuter efforts. Plus, we'll match the funds you raise up to $1,000, doubling your ability to make a difference for cats. Fundraising doesn't have to be scary. We'll be with you every step of the way. Check it out. You can find all of the details on the Community Cats podcast website under our education menu. Let's join forces to make the world a better place for community cats. So you said in the first couple of years, you were averaging about 140 to 170 cats a year. And and how are you doing now in terms of the number of cats you're spaying and neutering a year? Well, just this week, we hit cat 400 for this calendar year. And our overall number for those four years is 1,600 cats. So Wonderful. Yeah, we just have a small team, so I feel pretty good about that. It's really just my husband and I that have continued with this program. Oh, wow. Wow. So you really, the organization has stayed very small. Yes, our supporting organization has remained active. It's just our TNR team. For one reason or another, uh, people are still interested. They still receive the notices but they are not actively trapping at this point. Hopefully that will change as their life circumstances change. (laughs) Have you sensed any change in the community in terms of the uh, number of kittens going into the local shelter? Have you seen an impact in that that statistic? We are starting to see that impact. It's really exciting. Last summer, my husband and I actually fostered 85 TNR kittens. Oh, my gosh. And it it was an exhausting but rewarding summer. And all of those kittens, plus the cats that were in the shelter when we took over the management of it, were all funneled through and adopted. Now, this summer, our highest number of fosters has been at 15 
And that is just now that I have hit that number. So we've seen a fabulous impact. I just feel like we're really starting to see the fruits of our sweat and labor. Mm -hmm. And the important part is also to be able to keep up and on top of it too. you know, always make sure that you're staying on top of, you know, any new, new cast or new colonies that, that become apparent in the county. But it sounds like you and your husband and, and those that are helping out at the shelter are really making a, a great, a great difference and impact for, for cats. Well, we sure do hope so. And yes, you're right. You have to go and follow up because I just learned this week that another cat had wandered into an area that we had, quote, completed. And so now we'll have to circle back and pick up that mama cat and her eight offspring. And I just wanted to ask you a question that we tend to ask a lot of our guests on the show. If you saw a stray cat on the street, what would you do? And I know it's more of a rural area, so maybe it's a group of cats near a farm. What would you do? Actually, we try to see if we can figure out who lives there, and we try to encourage them to reach out for our services. We're not really allowed to solicit. They have to make the first phone call, but I have been known to leave a business card or two in a door, never in a mailbox, because that's not legal. <laughs> Gotcha. And what has been one of your more challenging situations that you've had to deal with over the last four years? We actually have had a couple colonies of over 50 cats to try to work our way through. And one of the gentlemen did not want anyone coming onto his land. So it was very labor intensive because we needed to give him the traps and the transfer cages in town. He would drive them out to his house. He would trap everybody. He would meet us back into town. We would get everybody transferred to our vehicle, bring them to our house. And this process was repeated over weeks and weeks and weeks of time. (laughs) So his colony was very unhealthy too, as you can imagine with it being that large. Yeah. It's challenging working with people sometimes, sometimes almost harder than working with the cat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, one other question I have, you were lucky enough to get the mentoring grant. How have you been able to fundraise for this program since 2014? We've been blessed enough to get a couple of other grants from other groups as well. Plus, our organization holds an annual spay getty dinner, and those funds are used strictly for spaying and neutering. And thankfully, between those efforts and the generous donations that come in through our community, we've been able to keep our program going strong. That's fantastic. Do you feel that your program would be where it is today if you hadn't participated in some sort of a mentoring program? No, that really helped get us going. It not only really motivated us and opened our eyes to some new and different ways to do things, but honestly, the equipment that we were able to purchase in a hurry helped immensely. You know, if you're working with only a half a dozen traps and you've got a colony of 15 or 20 cats, it can take much longer to work through that colony than if you have traps and transfer cages and other, you know, equipment to work with. So, Karen, if there are folks that are interested in finding out more about your organization or reaching out to you, you are our first guest that's been on the show from Nebraska. So maybe there are other folks out in Nebraska or out in that general area of the country that would like to reach out and find out more about the work that you do, how could they find you? They can go to our website, www.blairanimalshelter.org, and there will be a button on our homepage that will give you all the information you need, including contact information. And, Karen, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Just, Stacy, I want to thank your group for really getting us going. And I really want to stress to people, please 
spay and neuter your cats and your dogs, not only for population control, but for the health of your animal. Karen, that's a great way to end the show. I want to thank you so much for agreeing to be uh, a guest on my show, and I hope you'll be on in the future. Thanks, Stacy. I'd love to. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for listening to a Community Cats podcast. I would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes, leave a review of the show. It will help spread the word to help more community cats. 